and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. It continues to get clearer by the day that whoever is elected come 2023 will certainly have a job of work cut out for him to do. And perhaps at the apex, beyond the need for security or welfare, might be the need for unity to get Nigerians to see themselves as just that, or at least Nigerians first, before considering their ethnic affiliations. Is this possible, considering how divisive our elections can be, and the fact that all the major candidates hail from different parts of the country, with fears that the electorate could follow ethnic leanings in their choice of candidates? Well, tonight, I speak with one who has a crystal ball, Omong Victor Atta is a veteran of Nigerian politics, a former two-time governor of Akwaibom State. He's now the convener of a group called the Compatriots. Omong Victor Atta, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Well, it's almost 24 years into our democratic experience, and you were at the forefront, one of those who was elected governor on the eve of that uh, transition into our democratic experience. Mm -hmm. um, would you say that 23 years plus down the line that our democracy is delivering on the high hopes that Nigerian citizens had for it in 1999? Uh, clearly the answer, no, we are not. No. And it didn't just start 24 years ago. Uh, Nigeria derailed. And I say derailed because there was a Nigeria that was negotiated by our founding fathers, mm -hmm. and they took time, a lot of time. If I may just remind us, it was in 53 that uh, Anthony and I removed the motion that Nigeria should have independence, and then all said they were not ready. It took seven years to get to 1960 before everybody was ready for independence. So it took seven years of negotiation. And they came up with a decision, which they wrote into a constitution, that Nigeria should operate a federal system, a true federal system, and should be parliamentary, and with all that goes along with those. And um, then the military came, introduced a unitary system, as indeed they would. Nobody blames them for that, because unitary system is, is, is the unitary type of command is what they understand. And when the civilians took back with the government, they maintained that unitary system. That's why I say Nigeria derailed. And what we feel Nigeria needs to do is to, to be reinvented. Whatever method we'll use to reinvent Nigeria. And that's why we formed the compatriots, because it's been said that all it takes for evil to thrive is for good people to do nothing to stop it. Uh -huh. And so the compatriots are a set of people who have eminent people, very eminent people, who have the best of this country at heart. And they want the unity, they want to, Nigeria to continue as a political entity, and they've decided to spend the rest of their lives fighting and working to see that Nigeria remains united, peaceful, and equitable. Yeah, so you said Nigeria derailed, you know, from the ideals of what was negotiated as of 1960. I mean, but you will admit that there was plenty, the hopes were high as of 1999. I mean, you were, were one of those who, in, you know, rekindled hope in the hearts of citizens mm -hmm. when you decided to be governor of Akwa Bomb State. Um, in 1999, and you won. So in all of those years while you were governor, um, from, from the little that you, from your, at least from standing where you were, would you say that um, it's really about the system which we run rather than our own attitude towards government itself? A combination of both, but largely the system. I remember giving an interview and saying, if you bring angels to come and operate this bad system, they may fail, even though they are angels. And I mean that seriously, because a system that does not allow you to demonstrate or exhibit your best 
will just continue to frustrate you. In what way do you think that the system hampered you then as governor? A system whereby we had uh, what we should have it as a democracy, but we didn't really have a democracy. We had a civil rule. A very distinct from civil democracy. In a democratic system, I should not be answerable to the center, if you like, so long as I'm working within the Constitution. The, there should be coordinated relationship between the central government and the government and the federating units. But we didn't have that. We had a situation in which the president had the right of life and death, if you like, over what happened. See how some of, of the governors were impeached. A few people were called from the parliament to Abuja, sat and impeached a, a governor in a state. How can that happen in a democracy? But those things were challenged, and a lot of them were found out you know, to be wrong um, through the legal process. But the harm had been done, and it didn't change. It continued. And so that's why we say Nigeria had derailed, and we think we have to reinvent Nigeria. Yeah. I know that whilst you were governor, you know, one of the things which you, you know, stood for then, you were a champion for resource control. Um, I think, I do not know if you still belong to PANDEF. Do you still belong to PANDEF? Very much so, yes. So is it really possible, you know, that while championing uh, I do not know whether you still also believe in resource control as something that should still happen as a matter of justice. Um, if you do, then, you know, some people will say that it's going to be very difficult for you to be asking for unity on the one hand, and at the same time still cling to ethnic, or will I say, uh, leanings that, you know, point to a zero-sum game. For, for instance, you do know that other parts of the country, if you were to ask them how they feel about resource control, you know, the chances that they would support that, um, you know, that stance is going to be very, very slim. And maybe that's one of the reasons why the agitations continue. So how do you reconcile calls for unity on the one hand and these sort of calls, which we continue to see from social political uh, pressure groups? That call was done in its own small silo and confined. And everybody else is doing the same thing. And the compatriots are coming together from all over the country and say, let's talk about Nigeria. We've been keeping rooms kept careful about, but let us keep the house. Let us make sure that we are gatekeepers. We want to, I will bring my position, and the other man will bring his position, the other man will bring his position, and we'll sit down and talk about what is best for Nigeria. When you are a compatriot, you talk only about Nigeria. You will, of course, with the background of what you believe should be, but you are not going to impose it on the compatriots. You're only going to air it, and it's going to be discussed, and the compatriots will take a decision how best to reinvent Nigeria. I keep using that word because in me it means a reinvention. Because what has happened is what has caused all the divisions that are happening now. Oh, I'm being cheated. Oh, I don't have as many uh, local government areas as the other person. Is there a way we can solve all this? Mm. The compatriots can look at that. Mm. And, uh, but before we get there, we even have to have an election. So our focus at the moment is how best to try and make sure we work closely with INEC to make sure that the elections are properly conducted, violence kept at a minimum. We'll be working closely with the Abdul Salami Peace Committee. We'll be working closely with INEC and we'll be working closely with the security agencies. We will be working closely with the foreign observers to try and make sure that we have a proper election and that whatever comes out is a government that's accepted by Nigerians. Mm. So are you doing this because you fear that you might not have an election? We are doing this because we know that if this is not done, the divisions will continue. And the divisions will only end in Nigeria itself being divided. And we don't want that to happen. We need people in various areas of governance that will make sure that the next government that emerges will respect what we think are the principles of good governance. I really want to share your optimism, uh, but I'm finding it very difficult to see how, because these other organizations are still existing. It's not like as if they have all 
you know, merged. They have only given you a member. Um, I see that Hakim Baba Ahmed, who is a prominent member of the Northern Elders Forum, is one of your members. All they have offered is one member each to come and, you know, uh, you know, form this particular group. The groups themselves still exist. The lines that they maintain, the stances that they maintain, what they stand for, they still maintain them. So I'm, I'm wondering how you're going to reconcile this. Or are they saying that this is a way of proposing uh, maybe a, a solution or to find a, a common ground? Is that what this is about? Will they, will the groups be adopting it? Or will, still, will they still have, there are sometimes hard lines in terms of what their groups propose, despite whatever it is that the compatriots are saying? I'll give an answer. First of all, we had more than one member from the various groups. But did you listen to the third Igbo Congress that was held only, is it two days ago? They said, Nigeria's indissolubility is not negotiable if they give conditions. So you bring those ifs to the table and we talk about them and see how we can now resolve that, yes, Nigeria must not be dissolved. What so difference? it does not stop you mm -hmm. from having what you think would be best for you. Mm -hmm. But when you come, we now look at it, whether it will be best for Nigeria as an entity. What difference do you really think that this makes, considering the fact that this is not the first time we've talked? Uh, the number of presidents have had um, you know, at the top of their list, um, unity. If they have tried uh, national conferences, starting from, uh, from our president, Olusegun Obasanjo. The latest we have um, is that of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan, who had the 2014 national conference. So some people will say this is not the first time we have been talking. I can um, take you back for that. Uh, I was in the 1994. 95 conference that yes, was called I, I had to restrict it to, <laughs> no, to, the, to the fourth <laughs> no we had to, to go back Republic. because that's where it started yes and then of course by the time of person john called his own i was a governor so mm -hmm. i could not personally attend but i sent people there indeed and then i was a member of the jonathan conference in 2014. so what have we been doing going there to state hard positions this is what i want that's what i want that's what i want but never able to come together as a group. This is the first time, and I, I'm saying it with absolute conviction, this is the first time that people from the various areas of Nigeria are agreeing to come together and talk about Nigeria. If you say so. Um, I'm just looking at, you know, how you're going to, after we've had, because you said the first thing you want to be able to do is deliver on free and fair elections. You want to be able to partner with INEC and ensure that the, uh, the elect elections are smooth, et cetera. Are you also engaging with the different candidates? Yes. To say oh, yes. we are here as a group, this is what we're currently doing. Uh, what are you hoping to do with any of the candidates when eventually they emerge? What we hope to achieve is not even a matter of it dealing with them individually, but calling them together and say, look, listen, you want to govern Nigeria. Why? What, what is your purpose? Will you, will you, what, what do you think will do that it make, different, it make a difference to Nigeria as it is today? Already, yeah, again, if you look at today's Vanguard front page, one of the candidates coming out and saying he believes in restructuring. He believes in, um, what else did he say he believes in? Oh, resource control and those, those sorts of things. But we you had know? that before. When? I don't know, but we're, that's not, that, but that's not the issue. Who, that's not the issue. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not here saying that that candidate is doing something that we are, we are saying people are beginning to, the change, the change is coming. Even within the polity as it is, the change is definitely coming. People are now seeing that what we have today does not work. And we in the compatriots are trying to, first of all, get a government delivered, and then we, even as they go in the process of delivering that government, talk to the candidates and try and know what their thinking is and try to project what we think would make for 
peace, unity, and good governance. And we have to reconcile people. We must reconcile the various... There's been so much that caused these divisions that we have. Mm -hmm. We must try and reconcile people. Your stance right now must be with benefit of hindsight. Uh, you know, you've had many years. You've, as I said, introduced you. You're a veteran politician. You've run for governor. You've won, not just once, but twice, uh, which is what the Constitution allows at the maximum. You've stayed in the political arena. You're, you've been a member um, of the PDP Board of Trustees. In fact, one of the founding members of the PDP, as the case might be. Now, when you think about the activities that you've had in the past and the emergence of this many social cultural organizations, because some people, you know, really take objection to their existence. And they think that they are, some, in some instances, they are at the heart of our problems. Would you say that you'd be willing to take some responsibility for some of the disunity which we have experienced over the years? It, only to the extent that we were not able to communicate our position to others. And to others, we were not able to communicate their position to us because we refused to. Take resource control, for instance. When I started the issue of resource control, you know what my president said to me? Yes, you can re control your resources, I'll manage it for you. <laughs> That's how dismissive the whole thing was. But now we are seeing that without resource control, there'll be no diversification of the economy. Without resource control, there'll be no progress. Because you can't sit on the way down for the federal government to come and develop every bit of resource the federal government is supposed to administer. And we, we were prepared in a federal system that we had before Though I've, I'm not saying that the, the, the competitors have actually sat down and looked at this, the system as a system. No, we have not. We are very new. I mean, we're only two months old as an organization. So, but we will look at this system and see, is there anything that we can change in the system? Is the is the is National Assembly approach or uh, make constitutional amendment sufficient to give us the kind of changes that we need, the reinvention that we're thinking of? Or should we go all out and totally reinvent Nigeria? Do you think that we need to do away with some of the social cultural organizations? What, have, what wrong have they done? They stand by what they believe in. You bring them and ask, why do you want this? Why do you think this is good for Nigeria? Why do you want to get rid of them? You can't shut anybody up. It would be wrong. Let them, but let them not sit in their corner and do something divisive. Let them come and present a position to others. Mm. And because if we accept the idea of common nationality, we should be able to discuss what is good for the country, rather than you sitting down demanding that this must be done for me. That's why I like what the Igbo Congress did the other day. Nigeria will remain one if justice equity, peace, how do you achieve that? They cannot sit there and say, oh, Nigeria should, you cannot tell them not to say what they want to say, but you have to bring them to the table and let us all sit together and discuss how best to achieve those things for the good of every, what we hope to get at the end of the day is a better Nigeria for every Nigerian. Okay, uh, so I, you're not saying that this is born from a place of regret? No, no. But we are making we are progress. Of, in fact, rather, we want to make progress. Yeah. Well, right now, the politicians on the campaign trail, they're making their promises to Nigerians. You've talked about one that you saw on the front pages. Uh, and one of them uh, has been talking about a government of national unity. Um, how useful do you think that that sort of proposal is? I'm sorry, I, I didn't are. even understand what is meant by pro government of national unity. And so I'm not going to comment on it. It, it comes from the concept where, you know, people have said that our, our zero-sum politics makes politicians quite desperate uh, and making them resort to all manner of gimmicks in order to get the votes of the people. So look for a system that is inclusive. The system must be inclusive. You cannot do this winner takes all. So that's, those are some of the things we will discuss with, well, the, with the candidates. If we cannot do what you know, winner takes all, what would you be proposing? Because that's what some people say the solution is, a government of national unity. No, we didn't have government of national unity, but we didn't have a government of winner takes all when we had a parliamentary system. So maybe is that what we are talking about? We don't know. We have to examine it. When we had a parliamentary system, it was not a winner takes all. It was not. 
You're is asking... this presidential unitary system that has killed Nigeria? Presidential unitary system, I repeat, is what has killed Nigeria. You want us to go back to the parliament? Ah, 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 I don't put words in my mouth. I'm saying that we should look at what, whether there's an alternative or whether there's a better alternative, we have to look and then we have to agree. And when we agree, we implement. Well, you know, I did mention also in the introduction that the candidates, the frontline candidates, do come from different parts of the country. Before now, yes. I think that even within your party, the, your then your former party, the PDP, there had been some attempts to try and rotate uh, the, uh, yeah, rotate the emergence where candidates emerge from between North and South. Some people thought it was some solution to ensure that the country stays one and also to ensure some form of unity. Um, amongst the different regions. But now that we have the emergence um, of different candidates from different parts of the country, from geo different geopolitical zones of the country, do you have any fears? About what? Unity. The only fear that one can have is that we may not have um, an election that reflects the what should be the consensus on ideas. We may end up with an election that is a consensus on either tribal sentiments or religious sentiments or something, and that could be bad. That would be very bad. But the fear is if, in fact, we don't allow the elections to take place at all. I think we should have an election. We should have a president image. We should have, and then we talk about how to maintain the peace that would have had to be able to get that election going. I've read some of the ideas, some of the things that your group hopes to achieve um, going forward. And I'm asking myself, how do you intend to achieve some of these things? Well, let me tell you a story. When I was campaigning to be governor of Akwai Bomb State, I called some of my supporters and said, I am scared. And they say, ah, don't say that. If you say that, the opposition will say you are not ready. I say, have you looked at the enormity? I have written a manifesto. And I have an agenda of how to achieve some of the things in my manifesto. If you are conscientious, you will be frightened because the work is enormous. The work for the compatriots is quite enormous. No denying that. But we will find a way to do it and see how we arrive at a solution. And now we put that forward to the government and say, if this can be changed, if that can be modified in this manner, oh, hopefully we can have a new Nigeria. Are you involving young people? What do you call young people? We are definitely involving all Nigerians that are- I was going to say, you certainly don't qualify as a young person. Now, let me <laughs> tell you something. I was- over 60, at the time I declared to become governor in 1999. Today, I'm 84. And this generation thing bothers me because are we talking generation in terms of uh, four years, four years, four years, or is it age? Because within us, we had people like God rest his soul in peace, Lama Deshina. We had people like Akande and so on who were about my age. We also had very young people, like Duke uh, in Cross River, Ojikalu, and a few others like that. So do you put us all in the same generation? <laughs> That's the question I would like to ask. And would you say that since we left office and younger people have taken over, there's been a tremendous improvement? Can we honestly say that? We've had a deterioration. So this generation thing, we definitely want to groom people. We will make every effort, a very determined effort, to groom people into accepting ideas of good governance. I'm a patron of some of the student union groups in Nigeria. Believe me, what happens in those unions you, 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 you would worry you. And certainly, it is not the old, older people that are doing this uh, yahoo yahoo. It's not older people. So with generation, to me, is important. But it doesn't guarantee anything. What guarantees is a moral regeneration. 
accountability. They are raising the ability to accommodate rather than just tolerate. Those are significant. Those are important. And we, in the competitors, will try and make sure that we inculcate those in the people that are coming up, especially those who intend to lead us in future. Obang Victor Akita. Yes. Thank you for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you. Well, that's the program tonight. Please speak to us using the handles showing on your screen. Thank you for watching. I'm Mao Pao Gwing Yusuf. Good night.